when I first started hearing about niche markets, niching down your audience, ideal customers, this whole concept, it was very foreign to me because I'd always been trained that everyone was a potential customer. And it made sense to me that I wanted to speak to a broad audience. I figured the more people I spoke to, the more likely I would get a sale. All of a sudden, I'm hearing that I want to niche down, that I want a smaller audience, a very specific ideal customer avatar. And this was troubling to me. And the more I thought about it, the more I struggled. And if you can relate to that, then you're going to really appreciate this video. I'm Michelle Fox, founder of Boss Babes Online. And today is going to be pretty short and sweet, but it's got a choice freebie at the end. So don't go anywhere, okay? When I first became a beauty consultant, one of the phrases that I heard was that everyone was a potential customer because everyone has skin. And it was said sort of, you know, tongue in cheek, you know, sort of facetiously. And yet, the idea was always presented to me that you can't say that there are no customers or no one, you know, it's hard to find customers because everywhere you go, there's a potential customer. And so that was always my perspective. The idea of niching down came as I started to build my business more and more online. And even though when you build online, you have a, you know, a worldwide audience, which is the appeal of it. If you're talking to everyone, you're, you're talking to no one. And so to really be heard online, you need to find your audience. And I did understand that. I did understand that point. And uh, so eventually I was open to the concept. So if, if you're still catching up, ICA, your ideal customer avatar, it is teaching those of us in direct sales and network marketing that there is such a thing as an ideal customer. And if we understand who that is, you know, let's say that we could create, we could somehow conjure up the perfect customer, the person that has all the qualities and characteristics and likes, the uh, income and the background and the knowledge and the lifestyle that would make them the perfect customer for us. Who is that person? You know, what, what is that? You know, what are those characteristics? That's what we need to figure out. And it's, it is thinking outside the box for a lot of us. We just have never really thought like that. So, like I said, when I was first thinking on this, it was very difficult. <laughs> and so I sell skincare. And so I was, you know, coming up with, well, you know, I sell skincare primarily for women. So I guess my, my audience is women and that wasn't quite good enough, you know? So I think, well, mm, you know, we sell anti-aging stuff, so it must be old women, <laughs> but I kept, you know, coming back to, okay, but what specifically, I, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. And then one day uh, I had several orders in a row and I realized that all three of these women were like probably what I would say my best customers. They, they order consistently and they order a significant amount. And as I was getting their orders ready, I realized how much these women had in common. And as I started thinking about that, I realized that is my customer avatar. Okay. And I'll, I'll flush this out. So all three of these women are uh, late 40s to early 50s. They are all professional women. They work full time at salaried positions. Their kids are grown and gone. They're married. Uh, they own a home. They own nice homes. And um, these are women that vacation, uh, but they work lots, you know, many, many hours, like probably 50, 60 hours a week, but they do take vacations. Uh, you know, as I'm thinking this through, I thought, okay, I figured it out. I've got my ideal customer avatar. And, you know, finally I was so excited. So does that mean that I only sell the people, you know, 50 ish? No, but the ones that uh, that my products really resonate with, you know, that that is the age group, you know, that really seemed to be drawn to me. 
I sell to people younger, I sell to people older, okay? But there's like a sweet spot, and that's about where it is, late 40s, early 50s in there. The whole thing about, you know, professional women, married, own their own home, grown children, is that the only person that I will sell to? Of course not. I'm just saying that I started to realize that that there was a commonality there. Okay, so this is why this matters. I started thinking about things that I spend my time or my money on as a business person, like uh, this really set me free. Posting on social media, you know, that takes a lot of time. And I thought, okay, my audience is professional women working 60 hours a week. How much time do they spend on social media? Seriously, they do not spend much time on social media. Do they need me posting five times a day, seven days a week? They absolutely do not. Do they need to see me when they do get on social media? Yeah, for sure. So I want to have a presence, but it doesn't need to be as aggressive as if my audience was maybe, you know, people in their early 20s. I have a different audience than than somebody else might. So that kind of set me free. I thought, okay, oh, good. <laughs> I don't have to, you know, like I still try to post, but that's that's another thing. But, you know, so when I'm thinking about even like hostess programs, these are women that, that frankly, they make a lot of money. They, they don't have a lot of time, but they do have a lot of money. So are they going to be hostesses for me? If they do, it's not going to be because they want to get free stuff. It's going to be because they want to get together with the girls or they want to do me a favor. They really like the products. They just want to have some relaxation and some girl time. It's, it's much less likely that it's going to be about an amazing hostess program. So are you seeing how the more I understand my ideal customer, I can start to kind of tweak what I focus on in my business, what I focus on if I decided to place ads or when I'm putting together specials or hostess programs or social media posts. So it definitely matters. I think that when we start saying, well, it's, you know, it's women, it's this age, it's this uh, bracket, you know, uh, economic bracket, or this is, you know, they own this rather than rent. We start to feel that we're being biased and prejudiced and, and it's everything that we don't want to be, you know, the, everything that we're especially learning to, to be sensitive to. But when you're thinking as a business person in this situation, and so it's all just practicalities, it is not judgment. It's not, you know, it's not something that is like, you know, set in stone, like I will only sell to these people. This is understanding uh, who your niche is, okay? And it serves a purpose and you uh, have to kind of get past, because I struggled with this a lot, okay? So you have to get past that feeling of, I feel really judgy. You know, I feel really judgy saying, I mean, I've seen things will ask, well, how much is their income? Are they educated? You know, do they have a college degree? Have they ever been divorced? You know, all this stuff. And you're like, why? How dare, you know, <laughs> that's so rude. But you're getting to the, to the, to the nitty gritty of, of who your customers are, because the more you know that, the more you can drill down, you're going to know where you can find them. You're going to know what motivates them. You're going to know what their pain points are. The, the more you can understand what their needs and their desires are, and then you can look at your products and services and see how they can fulfill those needs and desires. That's what it's all about. Okay. That that is your job is to figure out how what you've got can serve your people. So it behooves you. I love that word. <laughs> it behooves you to really understand them, you know, at the deepest level even the tough stuff. Okay. Now I'm not going to call my customers and say, so, you know, how many times have you been married and divorced and how much money do you make? And you know, how far did you go in college? <laughs> I'm not going to do that. 
but it is okay for us to just kind of brainstorm and just kind of think this stuff out loud. And, you know, it's not something that I'm going to discuss with my customers. Okay. This is just something that kind of like in the biz that we do as a, um, it's sort of like an activity, a workshop type thing, but it really serves a purpose. There, there is a reason why we do it. And, and I strongly suggest that you do it. Once you start to get any inkling at all of who your ideal customer is, then it is a great idea to find some kind of workbook or something that helps you fill in the gap. So let's say that you are a stay-at-home mom and you sell children's books. Okay, so let's let's think about that. So your your ideal customer is going to most likely be stay-at-home moms. All right, so let's think about this. So they've got children. They may uh, still be breastfeeding. They may not have a car. Maybe their husband is at work and they're at home without a vehicle. That was my situation for a whole lot of years. Um, they may or may not have a degree. They may or may not have ever had a career outside of the home, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So you just kind of fill in the gaps and stuff. So what I alluded to earlier <laughs> is that I, I have such a workbook um, and I'm, I'm pretty proud of it. It started out, this was actually called 50 questions to get to know your ideal customers. So you can thank me later <laughs> that I narrowed it down to 12. So, uh, but it is a nice workbook and it, it really gets in there and talks about the physical characteristics, the demographics, you know, favorite. You can even think, okay, and here's the thing. Do we know this for a fact? No, it's, it's like pretend. We're playing pretend, okay? You can even name. So let's say we're creating a robot and this is, we're making an ideal customer avatar robot. We're calling her Sheila. And okay, well, what color hair are we giving Sheila? What color eyes are we giving Sheila? What's Sheila's favorite color? Where did Sheila grow up? We're making it up. It, it's sort of like you're creating a movie character, but this movie character happens to be your ideal customer. Tell me about her. Tell me everything that you can think of. And then at the end, oh, I guess put the word mine instead of mine. <laughs> you better change that. So keep your ICA in mine. <laughs> When uh, you're designing your personal brand, when you're posting, et cetera, et cetera. So I've got some tips there and then, you know, some other things, some, you know, some suggestions about or um, just kind of pointing out like why it's important that we know this. So it's a helpful little resource for you. And let's see, I can take this off the screen and just tell you the rest. So I've got something coming up pretty quick. I'm not going to go into detail yet because it's still about a month out, but some exciting stuff is happening after, you know, the new year starts. So if you are not on my boss babes mailing list, it would, I really think you need to be there. Okay. So go to michellefoxonline.com forward slash boss dash babes. That will take you to an area of my website and you'll see sort of a bouncing red box click on that and you can get on my my mailing list because my boss babes are the first to hear about all the cool new stuff that I do. All right. And something's coming up that you're going to want to know about. Okay. I've said many times that if I have a, an option between speaking to like an auditorium of people about my products, but those people are children, men, women, elderly, all different, um, socioeconomic statuses, different uh, backgrounds, et cetera, et cetera, versus talking to, let's say, a group of 50 women, professional women, gainfully employed, college educated, et cetera, et cetera. I would rather speak to the 50 women because I will probably sell to, at some point, half of that, half of that group. Whereas when I'm speaking to that large group, it's just chatter. You know, I, I probably won't really speak to the heart of anybody because there will be just so few people that, that really connect with me. Do you, do you feel me? 
So it, it is important that we understand our niche audience. It is important that we spend time kind of creating our ideal customer avatar, I-C-A. If you've heard it before and you didn't know what it was, that's what it is. And I've got a workbook to help you really flesh it out. Here's a little tidbit. If you are really, really, really stuck, think about yourself. <laughs> uh, we tend to attract customers that are like ourselves. So I am 50. I'm a little older than, you know, okay. So I'm not late 40s, early 50s. I'm late 50s, but, you know, I used to be early 50s. <laughs> You know, I, I was a professional. I, I am married. My kids are grown, you know, blah, blah, blah. So my my ideal customer is somewhat of a reflection of me. When I first started, I was a stay-at-home mom. And guess what? Most of my customers were stay-at-home moms. So when, when you decided to sign up to sell whatever it is that you sell, you were most likely an avid customer first. So think about yourself. What are your characteristics? What is it about you that made you such a great customer? That might be a great place to start. So if you're really stuck. So between examining the characteristics that you have as a, as a customer and the characteristics of your best customers, you know, somewhere in there, you're going to find your ICA probably. So I hope that that workbook is helpful as well. And for sure, sign up for the Boss Babes mailing list. And also don't forget to subscribe to my Boss Babes channel. We're getting closer. We're, we're closing in on that thousand, you know, thousand subscribers. So and we're going to have a giveaway when we do. So alrighty, So that is it for now. I am going to be doing a video every week with a unique freebie leading up to the launch of a very exciting thing. So stick with me. Make sure you get on that mailing list because you're going to find out more and more as we get closer. Okay. So thanks so much for watching and listening and I'll see you next week.